Hello everyone, my name is Alan. Welcome to this new video of Technology Moments. And today, a very quick video of something that many of you were wondering or that you were thinking of implementing and need some more information or experiences to do it or to make a decision. We're talking about the TP-Link's OMADA and its OMADA network controllers. Uh, how does it work? What similarities does it have with uh, unified systems like Unify, of which so many videos we have published? To date, and this changes very quickly due to the intention that tip and link has to expand this line of products, they will have this unified system to manage OMADA access points, uh, switches and gateways or routers, unifying and centralizing their management uh, in this controller. First, we need to tell you that we are very happy with these tests that we have conducted uh, of this system. We've started with the business line of OMADA, the EAP600 series of APs, which have proven to have a very good stability, an excellent energy consumption and an outstanding range with all the wireless standards they support. But since the objective of this video is to show you what the OMADA software controller is and how the unified centralized management system works, that is precisely what we'll do in this fast video. And we invite you to watch also our video of the Wi-Fi 6 on the access point OMADA, the EAP610, and we'll tell you what its performance and our experience was. For those of you who have used Unify, well, you'll feel extremely confident to make implementations in OMADA, especially since version 4 of the controller software is so similar to Unify. Well, in principle, it seems like a carbon copy of what we can do in the Unify network application, formerly known as the network controller or network controller from Unify. Uh, before starting, this version that we analyze in this video is the version for computers that run Windows. It is version 4, but at the time of releasing this video, version 5 was already available. Uh, very few changes though. If you wish, you can use the dedicated devices for this purpose, called the OMATA controllers, such as the OC200 and the OC300, that will allow you to run this service with no dedicated computers. Hands-on, the controller, installing it is as simple as downloading it from the TP-Link page that ironically, it's easier to find it in Google. Uh, verify that you have installed some version of Java or otherwise install it during the setup process. Follow a few short steps to define some parameters on the network, particularly the access credentials and the default wireless network that you will have broadcasting. We take note of the passwords and the summary it gives us maybe capture the screen and that's all for the installation. In our desktop, there will be a shortcut that if for any reason it doesn't start automatically, we can tweak it to start by using the command shell startup. Drag it to that window and that's it. Remember that the very first time we start it, it can take longer than usual and could even give you a startup error that we can safely ignore. Close and restart the application and you'll be good to go. It'll open our default browser and after authenticating, it'll take us to the panel or dashboard where just by seeing it, we can get an idea of all the devices we have in our network. Again, remember that the advantage of using this software is that it will allow you from this control panel to configure and provision all the equipment in your network, facilitating not only the management, but allowing users who starting these tasks to do so without having much experience and without risking to make a catastrophic error. Statistics, map, device, and clients, the categories that we'll probably use the most because they allow us to find quick information not only for our hardware, but for the client computers connected to our network. Insights, just like at Unify, will allow us to dig a little deeper into the information we've collected from an internal client or device. To make changes to our networks, we must go to settings at the bottom left of the screen to set new parameters and change how we interact with our users and our hardware. Uh, we can also monitor their traffic and maintain security. Very quickly, you can change and configure the wireless networks, changing passwords and managing the technology that they use within minutes, either for one or 100 access points. You'll be able also to manage the firewall for which, of course, we need to have the necessary compatible hardware which we'll see in our next videos. Establish virtual private networks or VPNs and many more tasks. Configuration of the controller itself, for which we highly recommend setting up an SMTP server that will facilitate the password recovery process. 
link your account with cloud management, which we highly recommend, but as we have seen with Unify, we must be aware of vulnerabilities of our provider, as today attacks are increasing at an alarming rate. Keep changing your passwords for non-existent words or phrases. Finally, the migration and backup tools that we must always not only configure, but also test for scenarios in which we encounter critical failures of critical element and must use our manual or automatically created backups. We will look in detail many of these topics. The important thing is to understand the scope of the management that we can reach by using the TP-Link OMATA Network Controller. Okay guys, that was all for today. You support us by subscribing to our channel and liking this video. Sharing our experience is our main objective. We invite you to do just that. See you next time.